In other news, the historic Abraham Accords spreading peace and prosperity throughout the Middle East. Or at least that was the intention. But to get the deal signed, you may recall that some controversial agreements had to be included, like the United States' recognition of Moroccan sovereignty over the Western Sahara, a move widely condemned by Algeria, which is in dispute for control over that region. In any case, now a year has passed and tensions have only risen. Algeria deciding now to completely sever its diplomatic ties with the Moroccan Kingdom, effective immediately. With me to discuss, live from Rabat, Morocco, economic consultant and educator Amin Ayoub. Amin, thanks for joining us again. Now, in cutting ties, Algeria is saying that Morocco has never stopped its hostile actions, specifically accusing Morocco of spying on Algerian officials using Israeli company NSO's Pegasus software, also of supporting Algerian separatist groups that Algiers deems as terrorists, and of failing bilateral commitments, including on the issue of the Western Sahara, of course. Morocco, on the other hand, of course, categorically rejecting these fallacious and even absurd pretexts for the move. How much truth is there to these allegations? Okay, let me start with the Pegasus story. The Pegasus story is over. Morocco actually took to court many of the media outlets that actually attacked Morocco, and uh, they didn't actually bring any proof so far to the courts in Europe, including in France and Germany. And going back to the, our story, our history, uh, the, relation, the historical relationship uh, between us and Algeria, I mean, after Morocco uh, took its independence from France in 1956, uh, Morocco and the leadership uh, at that time of uh, King Mohammed V, uh, we were, Morocco was actually helping the Algerians to, uh, to get their independence from France. And uh, since the, the, the issue started back in 1975, when uh, Spain uh, left the Moroccan Sahara. And uh, that's when the issue started. And the, milita the Algerian military actually mixed themselves up with the, with the, with the government. And uh, they actually tried to create issues uh, by uh, financing the guerrilla police area front. And uh, the issues with Algeria actually went to their peak back in 1994, when uh, a hotel in Marrakesh was attacked by a group of terrorists. And uh, the Moroccan government actually found out that those terrorists had French citizenships with the Algerian citizenships also. And we actually closed the border since 1994. So these issues have been happening for a long time, not just because of the biggest story or the Israeli normalization with Morocco. All right, so speaking a little bit more broadly now in terms of the consequences of this split, both of these countries are allied to the West and they're strategically important to fighting global terrorism with the Arab League calling on both nations to maintain at least a minimal effort of ties beyond just the consulates that will remain open. Uh, so how bad is the separation of these two nations for the region as a whole, uh, or even further out for the, for the rest of the world? I think this is just temporary. I don't know how things will go from here, but uh, we have uh, Algeria and Morocco, we have two consulates and an embassy and uh, we also have Moroccans who are living there. We have Algerians living here. On the terrorism front, I don't think Algeria is, uh, I mean, I don't think the West actually considers uh, Algeria as a, as, a, as a partner, as it considers Morocco as a partner. I mean, Morocco, under the leadership of our King Mohammed VI, uh, Morocco has been uh, working on uh, uh, ter anti-terrorism action all over Africa, including the Sahel region, uh, Mali, exactly, and uh, many other countries. I don't think Algeria, I mean, Algeria has been financing the Polisario guerrilla front for a while now to, against Morocco. All right, so what about, uh, what about with respect to Israel? Because Algerian officials, even as an aside, dragged Israel into this conflict, saying that Foreign Minister Lapid's visit uh, and comments in Rabat very recently, some of which were critical of Algeria's potential ties to Iran, were unacceptably offensive. Morocco says that Algeria would do better to focus on its own issues. Uh, what part does Israel play in all of this, and, and how is Israel going to be affected? All right, Lapid is not going to actually uh, make comments without having proof. So uh, that's, I mean, that's obvious. And also, as you know, many Muslim countries, when there's an issue, an internal issue, it's always, Israel is always to blame for something. So, uh, so I'm not actually shocked by by this uh, by this comment that they actually made. Do you see Do you see Israel as a as a smokescreen issue? Then, or, or is Israel not related at all to this? Because I, again, this is coming on the heels 
uh, at least adjacently of the of the Abraham Accords? So before the Abraham Accords, back in 2019, uh, the, the Algerians actually went to the streets and the, 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 the sentence that they were chanting was, we want uh, civilians to, uh, to actually govern us, not military. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is an internal issue and uh, they're trying to actually, uh, to actually focus on Israel because they have too many internal and external issues that the, actually the, the military government, uh, government is actually uh, making. All right, Amin Ayoub, thank you so, so much for joining us again. Thank you.